So we've now developed enough technology with the fundamental group to come back and prove the fundamental theorem of algebra. There's one fact that we haven't proved that we're going to need, which is that pi 1 of c minus the origin based at any point, doesn't matter where, is the integers. We'll see a proof of this later. But modular that one fact, everything else is now in place. So what was the theorem? Theorem said a non-constant polynomial P of Z equals Z to the N plus a n minus 1, z to the n minus 1 plus blah 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 plus a 0 has a complex root. So root in the complex numbers, i.e. it vanishes somewhere. p of z is 0 for some z. And the proof, if you remember, went as follows. You write down a loop, which I'm going to call gamma r of t. And that is the polynomial applied to the circle of radius r. Right, so this, as t varies, traces out a circle r e to the i 2 pi t. And then you apply p to that to get a loop plane. And the key thing is this is a loop not just in C but in C minus the origin because well I should have started by saying let's assume that there's no root right, so that P of Z is never zero so this can never pass through the origin. And then we're going to prove that the polynomial actually has to be constant. In other words, this degree for the polynomial n is equal to 0. So as r varies, this gives a homotopy. With gamma 0 being a constant loop, at p of 0, and gamma of r for large r is the loop we're going to prove has winding number 0. Um, so these loops are homotopic. They're not base homotopic, right? There's no reason that as r varies, this loop should pass through any particular base point. But if they're freely homotopic, like this, then they are based homotopic because the fundamental group is abelian. The fundamental group of the punctured complex plane is Z, which is abelian. So in the previous video, we saw that means based homotopy and free homotopy are the same thing. So we just assume this is a based homotopy. So that tells us that gamma zero, the equivalence class in pi one, based wherever we want it to be based, is equal to the equivalence class of gamma r for whichever value of r we want, but we're going to take r to be large in the same group. And this is Z. Moreover, this is the constant loop. So this is the identity in Z. Right, zero is the additive identity in the integers. And what I want to prove is that the large r we get n 
as the homotopy class of gamma r. And I guess I should say um, the loop uh, delta of t equals r to the n e to the i n 2 pi t um, satisfies homotopy class of delta equals n in z. Okay, so this I guess is a part of the proof that pi 1 of c minus the origin is z. Uh, if you need to check that some loop gives you each integer, this is going to be the loop that gives you the integer n. So this is, again, we've not proved this fact, this is something that will prove it. But then we need to prove that gamma r is homotopic to delta. Maybe I should call this delta r. Equals large r. So to achieve this, let's write out what the polynomial actually does. Right, so p of z is z to the n plus a bunch of stuff, which, what should I call it, maybe uh, q of z. So q of z is a polynomial of smaller degree. It's a n minus 1, z to the n minus 1, plus blah blah blah, plus a0. I'm just collecting all the terms and calling them q. So the stupidest thing I could do to get a homotopy between gamma r and delta r is to write down something like well, gamma of r is r to the n e to the i 2 pi n t plus q r e to the i 2 pi t. Delta r is just this first term. So why don't I just stick in a factor of s and I get a homotopy if I stick in a factor of s here that at s equals 0 gives me delta r and s equals 1 gives me this. That should give me a homotopy. Jobs are good enough. And in fact, that's what we'll do. But we need to be careful because this has to be a homotopy in C minus the origin. And a priori, this is just a homotopy in the complex plane. It's possible this could take on the value zero somehow. And we have to show for all S, when R is sufficiently large, this is not equal to zero. So um, let's get a new page. We need to prove H S T is not equal to zero um, for all S and T when R is large enough. So we actually need to do some estimates. Um, so we're going to prove that this is positive. So we need to find a lower bound. So um, using the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, this is bounded from below by norm of the first piece minus the norm of the second piece with norm signs around the outside. Right, this is always going to be smaller than the norm of this.
Next, let's simplify this. I've got norm signs around an e to the i something, so I can just ignore that. And I get r to the n. And here, well, if I can find an upper bound on q, that will give me a lower bound on this quantity minus this quantity. So um, let's try that. Q of r e to the i 2 pi t is, remember, a n minus 1, r to the n minus 1, e to the 2 pi i n minus 1 t plus a bunch of stuff plus a 0. So if I stick norm signs around this, then again this is going to be less than or equal to norm a n minus 1 times r to the n minus 1 plus a bunch of stuff plus the norm of a 0. And this is less than or equal to r to the n minus 1, which by now could be really enormous, right, if r is really large, times whichever of these a, ai constants is biggest. Right, so the general term inside here is norm ai r to the i. Well, this is a k because i is an imaginary number, so a k r to the k. Okay, so these r to the k's are bounded above by r to the n minus 1. That's the biggest one that occurs. And the coefficients are bounded above by whichever one is biggest. So we can stick here an r to the n minus 1 times this max of the ai's. Close. Okay, and that is bigger than or equal to r times uh, sorry r to the n minus 1 times r minus the max of these ai's so as long as this quantity is bigger than 0 i get positivity of of the homotopy right so if if r is bigger than this maximum If r is bigger than this thing, sufficiently large, then the homotopy is always through numbers with positive magnitude and it will never get to zero. Okay, so working back, I claim we're done now. Let me put a end of proof symbol. Looking back, what does this mean? This means we have a homotopy, h, that connects at s equals zero, delta, and at s equals one, gamma r. And um, this homotopy is now a homotopy in C minus the origin because it's always positive when R is sufficiently large. Looking back, that means that the winding number, so the element of the fundamental group represented by gamma R, is the same as the element represented by delta R. And I claim that's equal to N. And looking back, because gamma r is homotopic to gamma 0, that means n has to be equal to 0. That means the, con the polynomial has to be a constant polynomial. And we got that by assuming that there's no root. So if there is a root, it has to be... Oh, sorry, if there's a non-constant polynomial, it has to be a root. So this implies n equals 0. Okay, so that's a proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Modulo this fact that the fundamental group of the punctured complex plane is the integers and that the element corresponding to the number n is this loop delta. Now, the great thing about this is it only used topology, it didn't use any complex analysis. So this is a purely topological proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra.